Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Christmas Eve Eve Special Edition. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a very quick and massive shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out to Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintala, Alistair Main, Billy Highvolt, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rackier Gafford, David Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik86, Jeronism, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life Is Short, Matt, Missouri Bear, Nagara, Nibai, Reinhardt, Rene, Qatar Craig, Sally Ballis, Silver Umbrella, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, The Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock App, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, Tina Baker and Tom Hawkins. So a massive shout out of appreciation to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. I really, really do appreciate it. So with Christmas festivities in mind, a couple of days to go, I'm going to raise the mic on both Discord and G Plus panels and you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for the next live show. It's very, very much into this, this topic, I think, and people's abilities to let go of what authorities have taught us. I think they miscategorized authorities because pseudoscientists are not authorities. But in the realm of science, be authoritative. Say again, Paul. Shouldn't the truth, by its very nature, be authoritative? Authoritative is the wrong word. It's empirical, or imp the empiricism that is asked for here is the level and standard that is asserted. The two aren't the same, but they're used interchangeably by fundamentalist religious zealot globeheads. In other words, when they say science, they mean pseudoscience. As an example, science doesn't prove anything. Well, yes, science is an empirical method of establishing cause and effect based on systematic experimentation by way of hypotheses. So, science definitely does prove things. But what they've actually been using is pseudoscience. And pseudoscience doesn't prove anything. And may be subject to change. So, they change their just-so story, otherwise known as pseudoscience, whilst simultaneously asserting to their audience that they've got science. And when caught out, they simply say, oh, well, science doesn't prove anything. It just lends to the evidence. Evidence being proof. Proof being empiricism. Proof being actual science that they don't have. I notice how the narrative is all fucked up because one of them came in and said, oh, it's a closed system. Immediately, the next one said it's open. So which one is it again? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's claimed to be an open system. So the heliocentric, reified, sphere model world of a globe earth in a vacuum is claimed to be an open system they've got things traveling out from the claim to be sphere earth with gas pressure attached not dispersing into the sky vacuum out into the sky vacuum to visit these strange alien worlds which we as flat earthers simply refer to as lights in the sky claim to be vast bodies of rocks and gases not dispersing also into the vacuum of the sky so the whole bullshit narrative falls apart by application of the second law of thermodynamics these claim to be gas bodies that they travel out to through their open system also violate the second law of thermodynamics as does the gas pressure we experience here on earth you can't have a closed system exchanging matter because a closed system doesn't exchange matter so if you have something exchanging matter by definition it's not a closed system duh well but well but puppy lover in the discord live stream says it's an approximation qe where it's approximately closed. 
Yeah, on their model. No, you can't have approximately. You can't have approximately here. It either is or is not. It's either a one or a zero. In reality, so, in reality, can't be a little either, In reality, it's either exchanging matter or it isn't. In their model, you can do whatever you like. You know, you can change the values. You can have approximately open systems. You can have gas pressure not dispersing into vacuums. You can do all sorts of crazy nonsense in a model. We don't live on a model. Though. Yeah, you just you just press the the matter button, and uh, matter is allowed to leave the closed system. <laughs> or as you, simple as that. Just or, press the or button. You, or you they drag open a the little, hatch. Or you drag a little slider yeah, and go. bend light. You know things like that. You can do all the sorts of crazy stuff in models, but we don't live on them. The, the sky vacuum is the limit. <laughs> yeah, the sky is definitely not a vacuum. You can mass anything you want. Yeah, curvature. The housekeeping question, any signs of Earth curvature, is based around them reifying the horizon into an edge. So the edge that we get asked for, no, 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 that's their projection of the fact that they utilise a reified horizon edge in their model when they transpose their model by way of reification into the actual existence we experience. Well, their edge is a not actual location we would accurately call the horizon. A not actual location where they have boats going over when they simultaneously ignore perspective. So let's ignore the fact that it's reducing an angular size, give it a constant fixed value of 100 foot. That 100 foot boat's going over that reified edge of my sphere belief. Oi, flat earther, where's your edge? What are you talking about? I don't claim any edge, but you've got an edge. Boats are going over it, you moron. Take me to your edge. So Brenda just posted something in uh, Discord. A definition that Earth is a closed system and that mass does not pass through it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it's, this is where we got to on the last live show. So, Brenda, how, what's what's the score with Voyager then? How's, how's it getting where it's getting? Is that just a big fat lie? We know anyway it can't be where it is. It's in the sky vacuum, which can't possibly be real. But by your standards in your model, not reality, how, how does Voyager leave your model that's closed? Well, and also I posted an article from physics.org that actually says that the uh, atmosphere is leaking. So, okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's leaking spaceships. Um, <laughs> I posted five sources saying the Earth is a closed system. Couldn't give a shit. Uh, because uh, anyone could say anything. Define a closed system. There's yeah, sources. Hold on. Define a closed system. Don't care define about a closed sources. system. I'm asking how Voyager left yeah, if it's I, closed. Do you not? I don't care about the source. I haven't even read. Oh. I'm not interested. I'm asking how bloody Voyager leaves a closed system. Is there a hatch like in Spaceballs? Um, it's it, it's a closed system refers to the systems of the Earth. Uh, sorry, I don't it need words. Refer, Salad. No, I need an answer to my to bloody question. I asked a specific question about how Voyager leaves if it's closed. No matter's escaping. That would be matter. How's it escaping from your model? This heliocentric model, not the reality we live in, because the sky is definitely not a vacuum. But based on your reified religious belief in a heliocentric model, how is Voyager leaving if it's closed? That's my question. Not about sources or what open and closed are. How's Voyager leaving? Uh, Voyager isn't part of the thermodynamic equilibrium systems of the Earth. The fuck. It left it. How is that possible if it's and closed? The sources how did it leave a closed system? Is it got a hatch it, like in space balls? Now people know that Voyager left the Earth. How? If it's, it's closed, I've asked it's, five times. You're saying it's closed. I'm saying if it's closed, not people believe it's left. I'm saying if it's closed, how the hell did it get out? Is there a hatch like in space balls? Everybody knows that it uh, left she can piss off. the Earth. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, You're Earth useless to us. I don't want to tell, be told what everybody knows. What I wanted was an answer. How the hell is Voyager leaving if you claim it's closed? Not what everybody well, knows, you stupid girl. We also got PMARs in Discord if you want them unmuted. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> PMARs. It's your choice. Yeah, pop no, we, no. we got enough stupidity. I don't mind. P no. has been here a while. Let's see how well he behaves. I got him. Uh, be okay. nice. Hey, P.
Hello. That's a woman? He Mars is a man. Any evidence of axial rotation, P Mars? Any proof the Earth is spinning? Are you talking to me? I was just making a coffee. <laughs> did, you ask, did you ask me if the Earth is spinning? Yeah. Making coffees. Is it accelerating? We'll come back to you, P Mars. Feel free. Anybody else on the panel? Any evidence at all that we've got an axis or that we rotate about this axis as per the depiction of the heliocentric reified model? No, the whole idea is bunk because you presuppose Earth is a globe and then you presuppose there is an axis, so it cannot work. Right. If you don't have an axis, then we need curve, so that would mean C question number one. Yeah. Axis denied. <laughs> that's access. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Trying to trying to do a, a reasonable summary of the housekeeping question. So, any scientific evidence of gravity? Yeah, asked one. Walked in Narnia once. Who haven't we heard from in here? Fe meme parrot or Jack? Can you hear us? Fe meme parrot. Hey Jack. Hi. I can hear you. Unfortunately, I don't have any evidence. Ah, <laughs> oh, bummer. What about for gravity? Any scientific evidence of gravity? None out here in Australia. What else we got in here? Probably got some tumbleweeds for that gravity, right? Maybe we'll have more joy with a different question. Can you hear us, T Cozy? Oh, that's Babs, isn't it? Uh, I yeah, think that's Babs. Babs. Chocolate, I think that tumbleweeds are not caused by gravity, they're caused by air pressure differential. Here we go, let's try runs Cost with scissors. Tumble. Hey, runs with scissors. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? <laughs> I'm not sure if he's got his mic working again. He hasn't been talking the past few days. That's something we heard from. I reckon he this... says no mic. No, he says no mic. No evidence either. No. Let's try a new question. Bobo, Earth to Bobo, come in, Bobo. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? try Brenda any evidence of the R value Brenda oh I'm sorry I thought I was muted you were are you asking me? yeah R value evidence uh, what does the letter R stand for? radius the radius why would you need evidence for a measure it's the fundamental basis of your religious belief in a sphere earth who, who so measured if, it? if i want to know if i if if i want to measure for a door right i don't need evidence i just measure it right who right. measured the radius of the earth brenda yeah yeah okay why don't you put no, a ruler it, next to it on. just oh, like when you measure the hold door on. hold on she might be making a point Okay, so if you've got a door, I measure it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I want to. I have a door. I need. I need a new door, so I need to measure it, and then I go to the store and I buy the correct size. I don't need evidence. The measurement is the evidence that I take. To okay. Okay. All right. Show us the measurement of the radius of the Earth. 
How do you know how to calculate the radius <laughs> of Sorry, a did you sphere? Say calculate? I, I asked you a question. Can we, I don't need a question asked just, back. No, no. Show us how you measured yeah. the Earth like a door. Measure, not calculate. You, you, you didn't mention the word calculate when you were talking about measuring the door. Presumably, you ran a tape measure well, over it. R right? is the, the conventional. Uh, R the conven is the I'm radius talking. of Brenda, a sphere. Brenda, I'm trying to ask you a question. The conventional way of measuring things with a door, for instance, I'm just using your analogy, which I was in complete agreement with, I think you'll notice, that you just run a tape measure over it, right? Right. No, oh, okay. So to measure this door, for example, yeah, I wouldn't look... For example, I wouldn't look at the sun to measure the door. I'd look at my tape measure. We are in agreement. Yeah. Excellent. Now, your question again, if you wouldn't mind, Quantum Eraser. The door with a tape measure. So, show us the measurement and what she used to measure the radius of the Earth. I would prefer a tape measure, but you need a long tape measure. So, I'll accept something uh, in its place that is very similar to a tape measure. You could use an odometer in a car, right? So you could drive from two places in a car and measure the distance using an odometer. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then if that distance is yeah. based on the earth being a sphere, then you can, you know, determine the radius. No, no. I'll accept an, I'll Ooh, accept an odometer. So it's, I'll accept it. Hold on. I'll accept an, oh God. I'll accept an odometer reading. Go ahead and show us your start and end point. Well, yeah, I... Oh, the, the start point was Stadia, right? That was Stadia, and yeah. the, the assistant for Aristosthenes walked... Yeah, that was the name of the, that's the name of the town in Greece. No, what? no, so, not... Aristosthenes, hold on a second. Aristosthenes. Hold on no. a second. Are you using the odometer reading? Uh, he measured from Stadia, which wait a is second. the town. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Mm -hmm. uh, am I talking to PMAR? Are you on the odometer? Are you with the odometer reading, PMAR said? Are you two in agreement? Are you fighting as one, Brenda and PMARS? I was just trying to help Brenda. Do you appreciate his help, Brenda? So the way you, you'd measure distance. Are right? you using you PMARS odometer, Brenda? Brenda, it's it's only going to work if you actually listen to what's being said to you rather than just choosing what you're going to say to us and ignoring all responses. So the question you're being asked isn't in regards to the argument. Instead, it's in regards to what seems like a wingman. And we're trying to establish if you appreciate that he's adding to your argument. And if it's not helping your argument, please say, no, no, that's making my argument incoherent. Or yes, yes, I agree. Yes, odometer's what we'll be using. We need to know for your argument to be clear and well, concise. Uh, uh, what do odometers measure? No, I'll try again, oh, but slower. <laughs> Brenda, I'll do it at your level of intellect with constant aff affirmation. I just need yes or no affirmation. I appreciate your slow. Do you Just understand that there is another? Do you understand that there is another person on the panel also speaking called P Mars? That's part one of about a six step. Do you understand P Mars is on the panel talking also? Yes, I. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Brenda. Yes, I understand. P Mars. Yes, that's just all I need is a yes. Step two. Do you appreciate that he is also. Uh -uh added to your argument do you appreciate that yes i understand that he made a point yes that's not the question uh, you didn't listen i'll have to repeat the question because you're stupid i, I didn't uh, Brenda, an you didn't that listen because you answered a different question i don't want to have to argue about this six step for a dumb fuck process i'm having to go through to explain the simple question you ignored and then carried on with your argument. So, first step has been established. You understand PMARS is on the panel and talking. Step two, do you appreciate that he has added to your argument? Not that he's made a point, but 
whether or not it's an addition to your argument. Do you understand that he has added to your argument, you stupid idiot, Brenda? Uh, yes, I do understand that, bully. Call me a bully again, and I'll kick you out. You're stupid, because I've asked you quite clearly and concisely if you understand and appreciate that he's added to your argument, and whether or not you want him to. Is it conducive to your argument? Because he's talking about an odometer reading. And we're trying to establish if that is actually part of your argument or not. Now, that was the concise version. Do I need to continue on yeah, the six I mean, steps actually... for a dumb fuck? Do I need to continue on the six steps? Because it seems like I've gone way too fast for you in that. Because you're going to hand wave it or talk through it, aren't you? Idiot. Moron. Stupid. Can't comprehend what I'm saying. Doesn't listen. That's you, Brenda. I'm not a bully. I'm stating she facts by she... example. You have demonstrated all traits that I have just discussed. I'm not bullying you. I'm pointing out your stupidity. You didn't understand when I asked you to clarify whether or not PMARS is adding to your argument or not. You're still yet to do it because you're stupid. She said yes. She he is, is adding. adopting that argument. Yeah. You are. I, I, yes. I figured it out 15 minutes ago. I figured it out 15 minutes ago. She, what are you talking Nathan, about? Nathan, she said she is adopting the odometer reading. Perfect. So we're going to get a radius with an no, odometer I'm, reading. No, I'm not. You oh, just said no, yes. I'm not adopting the odometer reading. You just oh, said well, yes. Why have I, I know, just yes. spent the last... I, I understand. Uh, it's okay. Point. Let's shut her up. Clearly, I did need the six steps for a dumb fuck because she's too stupid to understand the concise version. That's why we've now got this confusion. I clearly and concisely asked her whether or not PMARS was adding to her argument. Got lots of silences. It seemed like we got a con uh, an affirmative, yes, he is adding, she is using it. And then immediately she says no. So we're back to confusion because she's too stupid to understand a concise question. Brenda, PMARS is adding to your argument. Is that something you want or not? I understand his point that he made. I didn't ask and that. It, it End of Brenda's time here. Fuck off. You're too stupid to converse here. Okay, yep. love? I'll let you off. I'll just let you off my so you acknowledge why you're going on mute. You're too stupid nice, to answer nice, the wrong question, love. Nice too job, stupid bully to converse boy. Here. Nice job, bully boy. Yeah, yeah, you're too stupid to converse here. I didn't ask whether or not you understood that PMARS made a point. I asked whether or not it was conducive to your point. But you're too stupid to get a concise point or question being asked. You've got a parrot that just wants to parrot. Doesn't want to listen. Doesn't want to acknowledge anything anybody else has said. Wants to call me a bully when I point out a stupidity. Yeah. But doesn't want to actually say, no, PMARS isn't adding to my argument as I've been concisely asked six times. Because that's the shit we deal with here. You know, I'm asking her for evidence of Earth radius. This is what you've got. A load of bloody background noise. Obfuscation techniques. P. Mars jumping in with an odometer eating. Clearly too stupid to realise you can't travel with a car to the centre of a presupposed Earth. But there we go, that's what we've got when I ask for proof of R. One guy saying you can travel there in a car. What centre of the Earth in your car, P? To get the radius. That's maybe, maybe a bicycle. You don't. You don't have to go to the center of the earth. You What's a radius? He do, so, so by his declaration now, we now understand that PMARS doesn't know what a radius is. PMARS, what's the radius uh, of the earth? Um, you can calculate the resident or the radius of a sphere by um, a measurement based he's, on he's the back surface to, of the sphere. You know. Sorry, Pete. Well, we What's weren't here? listening when we talked to Brenda about the difference between measure and calculate. And we said when we're measuring a door, we don't need to calculate with the sun what the door measures. So we're measuring it. Are we, P, measuring radius? Not calculating it, mate. Mm. No, in my model, we're measuring Oh, the no, no, no. Not in your model. We don't care about your argument. model. Pseudoscience, mate. We're in talking my about argument, model. whatever, dude. No, no, we're talking about Earth and it's argument, reality. Re reality, mate. No, no, not modelled. Reality. Hello? Right. So, in a car, you can measure the surface 
of the sphere, right? And then based on that measurement, you can determine the, the radius. No, that's you begging the question. I'm measuring the surface of a sphere, so you're already presupposing it's a sphere. The most base level yeah. argument you can have here is to beg the question, P. Have you <coughs> yeah. not been watching Don't recently? Don't you have to create a uh, hypothesis? Talk through me, asshole. Have you not been watching recently, P? You don't need to talk through me because you get smashed immediately. The most base level argument you can have on Flat Earth Debate is to beg the question. Automatically assume your outcome. And you have. I'm travelling over a sphere. So what, you just declared that it's a sphere in your example? It's the most base argument you can have here, P. Okay, I'm not begging the question because what we're doing is we're creating a hypothesis and then we're testing the hypothesis. <laughs> Measuring. Oh, really? The What's the observed phenomenon? Oh, really? That the, the earth is a sphere? Oh, that's you. You observed that, have No, you? that's his begging the yeah. question fallacy. He's just taking the piss out of us. He's not that stupid. I know him well enough to know he's taking the piss. No, your observed oh, phenomena he... is not your begging the question fallacy. The earth is a sphere. No. Yeah, you're not going to piss in our face here, P. It's not funny. Yeah, but I'm not begging the question, so oh, that doesn't really apply to my argument. As you're begging the question, you're assuming the very thing you're attempting to prove, a sphere, you're a <clears> dumbass. But, and always but, been a dumbass. What is a hypothesis in an experiment? It's not a hypothesis. You don't have a dependent variable. The question's not even context. You're an idiot. <laughs> that was quick. You want a quick string of nutters, P? Go ahead. Well, I'm pretty sure when a scientist does an experiment, they create a You don't hypothesis. know what a scientist is. You don't know what an experiment is. What are the three constituent parts of an experiment? Um, black people. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Right, Goodbye. that's your last. No, he only got of one course, chance here. There we go. Bye-bye. That's it. Bye-bye, P. Just overt In racism fact, when he gets held to task. It's no need for it. He's Only gone. I can be He's racist gone about black people. Yeah, don't do that in here, uh, boy. Wow, Pimars, what a return you've made! Thanks for coming back. I don't know about <laughs> you guys, but um, I the joke is usually funny because it's ironic. <laughs> that, that was that was really fucking funny. The irony he has shit to say. He has nothing to add to the argument. All he has is racist slurs every time he gets back into the corner. And he says words like nigger, which means ignorant. And that's all he is. It's ironic. The thing that annoys me about it is he it's hilarious. means it. That's the thing that really grinds, grinds my gears with it. Occasionally I'll throw in an overt racist joke. Because it's understood by everybody who's listening to that joke that I'm not against black people. Now, P. Mars will say the same thing, and I know he is. In other words, it's said with disgust and disdain on his part, and it, it, it's just an outrage. It really angers me, because he is actually bloody racist. Really? Actually, not just as a bluff? No, he's actually racist. What? P. Mars yeah, is just a racist. Are you kidding? I thought he was just a lunatic. <laughs> you have not heard this dude say dumb shit to me. Are you kidding? Uh, hello. I've, I've heard P. Mars say the dumbest shit well, yeah, ever yeah. and be totally <laughs> out of whack. As it were. I, I didn't think he was actually he really hurt. Right. I just thought he voice. did it to shock people. No, he does, it, he, get, he does it to get away with his actual racism. So in the same, he's using the same vibe i would use if i say well actually i'm a very proud black woman you know it's a double whammy for the lgbt people but the, the point is that it's overtly not true therefore funny well i'm not saying that to have a dig specifically at black people when i'm overtly not black and saying i am it's just a joke p mars will use the same similar uh, idea of being over the top racist so he can get away with actually being racist Okay, that's disturbing, if that's really the case. Didn't know that. Anyway, it's just it's, it's pointless. The, the whole thing spans back to the, whatever it was, a couple of shows ago. I forget when. when. When you're appealing to somebody, when they're putting out their evidence, 
it's the same if the person's a stone cold murderer locked up and they put out a good point that's logical and backable and you know empirical if they're talking about something that's scientifically related it doesn't matter who they are whether or not their claim is right or wrong is all that matters can you double check what they're claiming can they back it with evidence if so is the evidence actually proving what they've claimed if so what they've claimed is legitimate and it doesn't matter what they've said or who they are or what they've done literally matters not the only example uh, as given before is if you've got uh, legal evidence totally different standard if you're looking at somebody's claimed sighting of whatever or claimed uh, first-hand account of a crime taking place and it's their eyewitness testimony then yeah you look at how credible they are have they told non-stop lies in their life well then you probably don't want to believe them when they claim they've seen something but that's totally uh, subjective and you have to go on credibility in that instance we're not using that standard here we're using the standard of science has it been validated by systematic experimentation if it's a claim of cause and effect at all half the time people will ask us to validate something by science that's not even a cause and effect relationship we had it on the last show ah oh, i'll calm my tone because it was a friendly who was asking the p and peat thing came up again about whether or not water is actually h2o from who <laughs> i can't remember i don't want to drop a minute anyway whoever it was, it was. <laughs> Yeah, water is not Was it you? Oh, it's the one. He was mumbling. Go ahead, the one. Speak up. Yeah, so... You're kidding me. No, I'm not. I I'm sorry. You Are you kidding me? No, he's doing some new research, and he's trying to figure it out. It's tough. I'm on mute. I'll tell you what. You better go find another group, then. <laughs> go find Pete and Pete. I'm not putting up. I'm not tolerating it. Sorry. He's still figuring it out. He's not making any absolute declarations yet, as far as I heard. Right, Dejan? Yeah. Exactly. That's it's very right. tough. Because there are serious issues with chemistry. You're on shaky fucking ground right now, I'm telling you. Are you in Discord? Nope. Uh, You're currently lucky. Currently, I'm in G+. Plus. Yeah. What do you mean by I'm on shaky ground? Explain You're on yourself. shaky ground. Go to Pete and Pete, right? Why with water as an up? element. We've dealt with this stuff before. I'm not dealing with this anymore. Well, he's Take not making declarations that Pete. they make. He's just saying, look, they're unraveling certain details that require more exploration and looking into. That's what Dejan is doing. He's not standing behind Pete and Pete's statements. Okay, QE? Yeah, the, basically, when I uh, was dealing with my research, I found out that a lot of like chemistry processes don't add up for me. So I started looking at someone who's dealing with chemistry. And that's when, where I found Pete and Pete. And I saw what they're there, what they are doing. So I kind of have a similar approach and sense as they have about stuff we've been taught as a fact. Chemistry is an actual science, right? You heard of the periodic table before. He's not claiming anything yet. Can you let him finish? Yeah. So the question for you, John, is it's for what? I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not answering any of your questions, Pete. He's not. Well, I'm well aware of that. Uh, uh, don't worry. He's. he's, he's, he's Asian finish. John's not gonna hurt. But don't worry. Uh, so in in nature, do we ever observe water splitting into hydrogen and oxygen? The answer is no. Are you asking? Are you asking me a question about fucking water? No. Yeah. Yes. yes. In nature, okay, you're not. He's not in Discord, is he? <laughs> no, he's no, not. He's not. <laughs> okay. Stop eating with your mouth full, John. Uh, you can't not eat with your mouth full. That's nonsense. I didn't mean talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, Mr. I sip tea every morning on my show. You need to calm down too. <laughs> have you seen that? Have you seen that sock slurp win? That's just brilliant. I pissed exactly. myself when I saw no, that. No, it's slurp win. Slurp win. <laughs> slurp anyway, win. Back to water. Whoever, whoever that is, it's a friendly. I'm sure they're being I nice. Have criticism they're... on my tea drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was me. <laughs> okay. So, John. Stop eating with your mouth full. You're right. That's pretty silly, but that's like, shut up when you're talking to me. <laughs> so, John, do we observe, because you have this background, so you, you'll be the person that will tell for certain, do we observe in nature water to split in hydrogen and oxygen? Are, do you have a death wish? Are you the death? He's retarded. Uh, you must have a death wish. What, here, what is particularly confusing about Pete? State this. I'm not dealing with your Pete and Pete nonsense. Water's an element horse shit. I'm not dealing with that. Ask somebody else. You're lucky you're not oh, in Discord. Yeah. This is called being a bitch. You don't even want to you don't even oh, want to don't, argue don't, photons. Don't, you don't want to talk about the come molecules. On, you, you just want to No, come on, nonsense, don't you? No, no. Just no, you're just nonsense. asking. It's a question not your opportunity to, to stick the boot in. They're not gonna answer anything. So yeah, I agree. It's not your opportunity to stick the boot in. And my slurp when decided, you can always talk I would to say me that I would say, John, that it's a shame that I get a lot of my surety from the process in which you do things. This is an area in which I heard something that you obviously think is horseshit, and I can't look to you for reference because you refuse to have the conversation. Because I already so had the I'm conversation in the past. Go back in the past. Me and Adam discussed this at length. Elijah, I'm not doing you it again. Discuss the same shit over and over for a thousand shows. Fair Why? You can't you can't discuss it anymore because yeah, you know you're gonna reason. get work. Uh, I'm not trying to feel that. Like I want to try and calm down Quantum Eraser, so I'll try and feel that. How does this relate to the nature of Earth? Well, this uh, relates to the gas pressure thing and relates to relative density. Water's not gas. Yeah, but water turns into gas. And they are connected with pressure because if you if you have less pressure, then water evaporates. Yeah. Well, what's that's that got to how it's related? Right. What's that what's that got to do with the nature of Earth? Well, everything. Come on, Nathan, don't be so obtuse. I'm not being obtuse. I'm asking specifically how it's relatable in the in his yes, question. Gas pressure no. and Earth yeah. are very related. That's one of the questions in the housekeeping. So when we're talking about gas pressure and when things become gas, I heard him, Anon. It's very Anon. Important. I heard him. But that's gas pressure. I've got a housekeeping question that covers that, haven't I? This isn't about that, though. This is about water, specifically. And his question, his opening gambit is, does water get separated chemically in nature? That's his opening yeah. gambit. And I'm asking how this relates. Okay, so you, it's not me no. being... The answer is I'm no. being interrupted by Anon, of course. So I'm not being obtuse, am I? You are. What? Let him answer Anon, the question. Let Chewy answer. Stop blocking Stop Chewy. Like Anon. Come on. Don't block. Seriously. So the reason is that uh, when you have a claim that the, the atmosphere plane consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, there should be a way for people to split the gases. So if you take a cubic uh, meter of air, then you should be able to split it into 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Uh, but it has the 70% nitrogen. Wait, no. Hy did you say nitrogen or hydrogen? Nitrogen. Hydrogen, right? Well, nitrogen. Oh. And okay, right. Okay, never mind. So, the people who produce uh, machines that use pressure swing absorptions state in their 
uh, manuals that the machine that produces the nitrogen or splits the air into two nitrogen and oxygen and gives you the nitrogen as a product it's exhausting air and then where is the oxygen that was split that was supposed to be exhausted why is it air and not compressed oxygen as a result of the splitting of the gases what why would it get compressed compression is something that has to be externally applied it's not a I natural will, state in the pressure within this realm will, can i send you the manual and you can go through what the machine does and then ask questions i sorry but oxygen and all that nitrogen it only becomes liquid under heavy pressure who who said liquid bro what you you did no are you listening? Says, I'm, I'm apparently not hearing it all too well. Sorry, sorry. Never mind. A machine that pressurizes gas in like very heavy containers, so it's high pressure gas, right? Nitrogen and then oxygen. So it uses a molecular sieve that's like small, tiny balls. So it compresses the gas inside, inside that thing, and from the machine you get your nitrogen or you get pure nitrogen let's say 99.9 mm -hmm. percent but then the machine needs needs to exhaust all the other compressed gas and it should be only oxygen left but then the manufacturer states that the machine uh, exhausts air not oxygen and it should be only oxygen why i mean the, why? Oh, Why can it not be some nitrogen? Arwen, and listen. You have a liter of air. Okay? You compress it and right. you split it in two. What do you have? In a container, right? Yeah, 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Yeah, and all the other stuff in there. Yeah, that's 0 0.01% or 2 it doesn't matter but still CO2, all the other things yeah but still you have 21 percent okay let's say 20 percent oxygen and 77 percent nitrogen right so when you split it you end up with those two this is what the machine does but one of the gases is always missing if the machine produces oxygen the nitrogen is missing if the machine produces nitrogen the oxygen is missing missing yeah what do you mean missing it should be exhausted when the gases are separated first the machine compresses yeah i understand that but no first but the is there a lack of pressure or no. is it is wait. the entire wait. pressure output wait. the same or not wait first the machine compresses a certain amount of gas then it splits it but the gas that you get as an exhaust, it's not what it's supposed to be. But it is the same pressure amount, right? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, well, that's very fascinating. There may be some something weird going on there. It's, it's certainly worth studying. Doesn't mean that water is an element, though. It just means there's something weird going on. It's very worthwhile investigating. Thanks. Well, I didn't know that back to water if you skip the part that water does not conduct electricity and if you don't observe in nature water becoming hydrogen and oxygen then that's a man-made thing it's a process that man created so we can transfer uh, one gas from a liquid state to a gaseous state into another gas no, I, I don't. I don't have any idea where you even remotely get that conclusion from. Really, just because we I can only produce the gases separately with man-made devices, because yeah, those electricity and the conductors and all that—that that, that doesn't typically normally exist in nature. That's true. You got to kind of ins insert all that stuff unnaturally through a man-made device. But yeah, the gas is definitely split up in two different types of gases. Yeah, we within know. That. A clo can I finish? Within a closed container where nothing is vented out, just water 
And then there's two different types of gases. One doesn't burn, but it makes you pretty high if you breathe it in. The other one, it burns pretty, pretty rapidly. And if you then mix it up and you then burn it, then you, you explode. Yes, so, we yeah. all know that from school. Yes. Now let's look at the stuff that everybody's overlooking in that process. First of all, you cannot electrolyte pure water. And we are concerned about water, not water with ingredients that's impure. That's right. There's salt in there. And yeah. that salt is all accounted for and left behind after the water has been vaporized into the gases. All of it. Do you Nothing know that's lost? Arwen, Arwen, before the water is evaporate, evaporated, you have to put more salt into it. If you put just a small amount of salt, the electrolysis will stop at yeah, one time. Yeah, it has to properly conduct. And yeah. then as the, no, as the no, water no, evaporates, no, no, stop, it will become no, more salt. Stop. Come on, let me finish. So that's one of the points. The other point is when you pour the salt inside the water, why isn't it bubbles coming from everywhere if it's the salt needed for the water to decompose? as there is electricity everywhere inside and it only comes from the anode and the cathode because that that is where the reaction takes place so how many substances you need to generate gases you need water and you need the proper conductors which is yeah. salt which is the rod the elements, and then the reaction takes place very close in proximity to but those what, specific what, rods with those substances. Yeah, but what happens when one of your rods decomposes and you have to place another one? Do you account for this? Yeah, but that's rarely necessary because you need a lot of water to vaporize before you get to that. Are yeah, sure? it, reacts, it does react. Hey, salt, salt actually reacts with metals. This is known. But it's a separate reaction. Do you guys both hear other people talking? No. No. Who else is talking? I can't hear anyone else talking. Lemon Bird is talking. Oh. I can't really? hear him. I can't hear Lemon you Bird. You guys don't hear Lemon Bird? No. Where? Uh, I'll disconnect this uh, uh, Discord and then rejoin. Oh, that. my bad, my bad. <laughs> I thought, I the, like, are I you hearing else open. Bird? I'm sorry. <laughs> I had something else open. I'm sorry. Continue, guys. My bad. Uh, were you imagining I going nuts Hold on. Just, Is there a problem with Discord, or was Chocolate having an acid flashback? Which one was it? It's not a problem, yeah. otherwise. Yeah, that was, that was acid flashback, yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> my bad. So, yeah, that's, that's a, a big concern, and everybody's just whistling past it as, as it's nothing and it's a big thing about no, water. No, 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 no. no it's not now you may be there's still something there though okay but i don't think it is what you think it is it's very interesting though but i i totally put down how the mechanics of it work and it there is no substance lost except for the water the salt remains behind there is some kind of reaction interaction with the rods and that's it but all of the salt is accounted for, all of the metals are accounted for, the original masses of it. And the water turns into two separate gases with separate properties. And that's just it. I have seen it. I've seen it demonstrated in okay, front so, of me. Uh, Arwen, now I'll set up a um, water uh, bathtub, small, small one, small tub for, for electrolysis. I'll use graphite rods and I will use normal salt. Now tell me what will happen first. I'll have to put more salt or I'll have to change one of the rods. You have to what, sorry? The rods? I will put the rods in water. I'll connect them to mm -hmm. the electrolysis. I'll put some salt in, some like small amount just to get the process started. And tell me what will happen first. Should I have to put more salt? Yes. Or Always more salt first, because the amount of salt must be proportional to the amount of total water being subjected to the process. Mm -hmm. and, and the well, concentration of salt will grow okay. as more okay. is evaporated. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And what, think, what do you think it will happen? At one point, will the water evaporate first, or the cathode or the anode will break down, and I'll have to replace it? With graphite? 
I, I don't know the difference. Is that a different type of setup? Like a pencil thing in the middle, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if specifically graphite was used for that in the demonstration that I saw. I don't remember. Yeah, it's it more than 20 years ago. It's conducted. I don't know. I'd have to see it. All right. I'll film one especially for you. Okay. We'll cool. discuss it later. So, topic closed for now. <laughs> All right, I'd love to see where you're going with this shit because I'm I'm really curious. And I think you are unraveling like little pieces, missing Easter eggs kind of hidden in between chemistry. I think there's more to it, but I, I, I haven't seen things though that just completely contradict the fundamentals or the periodic table, not really. But transmutation, there is interesting stuff there. The concept of the filtering, what you just mentioned, is very fascinating. I, I want to know more about that. So, yeah, keep me uh, updated. I'll, I'll send you the manual of the machine. Plus, cool. I have a friend. If you find interesting stuff or videos, uh, don't be shy to post it in the early bird chat. Yeah, plus, plus I have a friend that produces liquid nitrogen in huge quantities, like manufacturer. So. Hmm. Okay. Okay, then. <sighs> Excellent. We exhausted the subject? Yep. Any evidence of forward curvature? Uh, there's no, yeah. we, there was a couple of housekeeping questions left, like self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth. No way, balls spinning inside balls. That should make us dizzy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still want to know even like the very nature of volcanoes, you know, because that is obviously where much of the molten iron core would be inspired on. It's always drug in there as to, oh, that's under the volcano. But what is it actually? And how deep do volcano pockets go? And these are also kind of mysterious questions. But yeah, to assume that it is inside of the earth vastly as it is supposed to be and there's no clue of that whatsoever about uh, gas pressure without a container mm. no i don't think there's any examples of that in order for gas pressure to manifest and find some kind of equilibrium for that possibility, there must be a limited amount of volume to for the gas pressure to settle in. By something, somehow. Yeah, indeed. Whether it be a physical barrier or a conceptual limited amount of space in any way, there has to be a limited amount of volume in order for gas pressure to be able to stabilize, to, yeah, to find an equilibrium in any way. So we can have the delta X. Yep. Well, that's it then. That's all the housekeeping questions covered after about 53 minutes of show. Yeah. Hey. Any Glowcats want to share their pain? Probably end up sharing it in the after show because with that I'm going to say first and foremost a huge massive enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making this show possible. If you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley 1980 this is where we bid you farewell. A huge massive enormous thank you to all of you tuned in, smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed and all that good stuff. As I say stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley premiering stream. I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! As its icon. <laughs>
Did anyone else notice that? He, he did that a while. He did that the same day <laughs> that the Jim Bandit Nazis came out. So. Oh, I, I hadn't noticed that so far. But I'm not seeing yeah. It. <laughs> there he is. You sticking the neck out now? <laughs> he, he's marveling at our, the new Master B icon. The bells, the bells. No? <laughs> <laughs> what is the new best to be? Oh, it's the troll. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few gem panda socks. Have you noticed? Hunchback of Notre Gem. Yeah, has yeah the, I noticed has that one. <laughs> Has he commented on anything concerning his revelation yet? Don't know. I don't follow Jim Panda. Heard anything? It's not a surprise. I said this last time. I mean, no, I haven't seen anything. I'm not overtly coming up on my feeds, and I'm not subscribed to him, so not that I know of. But it wasn't a shock how he looks and how he is and how he behaves all make perfect sense to me. It's certainly typical. Yeah, I said that at the time. I was like, that's why they depict trolls the way they depict them. Like zit-faced, ugly monsters. Well, that doesn't mean, by the way, that everybody that looks like that is actually like that. But it is one way to end up like double tragedy. Because, yeah, there's people that have these kind of ailments that become really awesome human beings instead to compensate for their handicap. And they become usually very beloved or respected. But it seems like Jam Panda did not choose uh, that kind of path for himself. No. That's why we asked them to share their pain. Any comments on the video I posted yesterday with the sunset? Yeah, that was crazy. A little bit. <laughs> I was like, what am I looking at right now? <laughs> this is weird. Yeah. You mean with the, the layers over Antarctica? Is that the ones you're referring to? Nah. Nah, it's... Uh, no, it's, it's just weird. the sunset from the airplane, and it just looks fucked up. I've I, seen... I, I, I don't know what's going on. I think I think there's a layer of uh, clouds, the high altitude clouds, that's the same color as a mountain that the sun is sitting behind. That's why it looks like it's dipping inside the earth. It's just weird. Badass. I've I have seen sunsets from airplanes. They are amazing. You are right. Yeah, but this one was it was like weird this? though, because like there was so much more uh, a horizon in the back of it, right? It, See, it would appear to be horizon in back of the sun where it was setting. It was weird. <laughs> it's like, what are you it. doing, son? <laughs> Yo. I, I, I think what's, what was behind it wasn't necessarily the horizon. I think it was just a very flat line of high altitude clouds that was the same color as the ground. That's the only way I can... Yeah, I, I get it. I'm just this. saying it just looked very off. Just can someone in so, can someone in G plus play it so we can actually see yeah, what, what you're talking about. It's on Skype. About. Where, where it's is on Skype? Skype. Oh, hold on one second. Yesterday. Uh, where? In, in Master B. Correct. Oh, it's where a, where I find what it? the fuck is this? Never find it. I'll have a go though. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll paste it. Hold on. Oh yeah, can... yeah. By by the way, if I may for a moment. Uh, Everyone that hasn't already, please subscribe to Boat Rocker, which is Paula, Bible Literalist, on DLive. I was the first subscriber. People need to subscribe to that. Just make an account on DLive. It's very hmm. simple. And subscribe to her, so to support her. Okay. What's this? I've got a picture of conspiracy cats as a... Like a chaplain or something. Who posted that? I just posted the video. Oh, okay. It Again. must be. Yep. And ah. 
Who okay. does this belong to? I'll, uh, Who does the video? Okay. Is it some? Is it a friendly? I, I found it. I found it on the internet with some guy that was posted uh, four years ago. He doesn't care. I mean, I don't think he does. I'm it's presenting it. Yeah, should I risk it? it? I'll risk a little bit of it. Go on, then. I've got you a power That's. It's just one minute and 39 seconds and no music, so... Uh, that totally looks like a lens flare. Watch it yeah. set. The hotspot, you mean? Yeah. Wow, that is weird. It's weird. Right? <laughs> That's what but, I'm saying, man. But could, could it be that, that basically the horizon is just looming through it or something? Yeah, that's all I'm going to play. It, yeah, so it does seem like it. Like the entire horizon has been loomed up, but the sun can still be seen through it. See? Can you see the bottom line at the height is where the... That's what I mean. I think that's the mountain. And then be behind it no. is a high altitude cloud. No, there can't be a mountain. Color. No, no, actual objects are not transparent. It must be a looming mirage effect. Otherwise, it makes no sense. <laughs> wow, that is weird, man. <laughs> right. I, I really think that's really, really weird. Wow. Behind it. I've had it up on screen for a few seconds, but not enough for me to get him copyright striking me. Nah, you. There's nothing to copyright strike about it. Yeah, there is. It's his video. It's I don't want to get real into life this. It's bullshit. not monetized. It's uh, less than two minutes, and there's no music. Uh, it's not how it works. Anyway, I don't want to get into this. Yeah. Shout out to Eric, 26 subscribers, and poster of that video. Well. Does it still is it still a copyright thing if we have commentary over it? Like I don't. Yeah, no? this, How does it, that yeah, work? yeah. We are definitely within fair use. It doesn't matter. People can still try and strike you, but if you limit it to the point where you've got like a ten second clip, then YouTube just will reject your claim, which is the point I want to be at, where I'm basically completely one hundred percent covered. Now, do I want gotcha, to get into the gotcha. point where someone can say, "Look, here are YouTube. Here is from." 25, uh, 1 hour, 5 minutes and 22 seconds to 1 hour, 6 minutes and 14 seconds, my video. Now, do I want to argue with them that it's fair use? No. I'd rather they just weren't in a position to even claim. And if I only play less than 10 seconds and then click away and then put it on for a few more seconds, that that puts them in a position where it's not even, it's, it's completely transformed the material by then. It's not, you know, that it's just fair use. It's tr completely transformative to the point where they won't be able to match it up with their material where if they try and put in a claim and put a timestamp next to it. So it's just me covering my own ass. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Nathan. Yeah, Could I get this, it. Can I say something? Could this video be the actual first proof of antipodal star rotation? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. But yeah, I see what you're saying. It is very, very interesting. It's funny. This was put up in 2015. Nobody, I've never, I've not seen when this I, yet. When <laughs> I found that video, it had 30 views. Should How have many 100 views have right now. Yeah, the guy only has 26 subscribers. Like, like what? I said, it's just this guy. His other videos are just, you know, just it has nothing to do with flat earth, nothing to do with anything. It's just like video games, and like that. I see. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I watched it like three times yesterday just looking at it like, what am I looking at? <laughs> what am I seeing right now? I I saw it, I like, the what? horizon is crazy. But this, this video goes out on Christmas Eve Eve. So whether or not I'm in the chat to post a link to his, uh, to his screen. If I am, I'll try and dig it out from Master B. If I'm in the chat, I'll try to post it if it comes on the Nathan Oakley. Sure. Just keeping track of the upload schedule over Christmas is a bit chaotic. So it's not like I'll have all the different links. Normally, it's just like you remember what you what you talked about on the previous show because it's only going out 12 hours later or less. So you can just remember and chances are it's in your history. Whereas if it's going out with any sort of delay, which all of the Christmas videos are pre-recorded, like this is pre-recorded, um, 
it's hard to keep track of what you need to post. So if I seem really lax and I am in the chat, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know where the link is. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, whatever his name is. We'll give him a proper shout out. What's his name? The videographer channel. It just says Eric. Oh, well, that's useless. <laughs> no one's right. going to find him by typing in <laughs> Eric into YouTube. Uh, well, you know, it can't be helped. If I've got the link, I'll post it. If I haven't, tough luck. But shout out to Eric. Hey, Nathan, can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Tim, man. Uh, in interesting thing happened yesterday when I went to watch uh, the classical match between Real Madrid and Barcelona at the local uh, restaurant here. Seated next to me was an ex-professional soccer player and a former dentist who has retired. And uh, came and we're talking and we get to some subjects. And somehow I find the transition to the scientific method. So I start explaining the scientific method as we do here on the show. And I had my phone right there at the bar, the pizza bar. And uh, I lifted it up, and it was only like four or five inches I lifted it up from the counter. And I said, what's going to happen when I let this go? And then, of course, they answered. And then I said, well, all right, let me let it go, because I had a, like a soft beanie cap there, so it fell on that, nothing happened to the phone. So then I picked it up again, and I brought it over, across from the, the bar counter to where it would fall four feet to the ground. And I said, what will happen if I let go here? And they said, well, it's going to hit the ground. And I said, so did I move its position from a rest to an unrest and seeking rest? And they just looked at me. And I said, well, let me use these words, equilibrium and disequilibrium. And then that led to gravity. So long story short, the guy who's a dentist looks at me and says, man, you got this down. What kind of education did you do in your younger age? And I said, oh, I'm just a high school grad. And he says, no, no, you know too much. And I, my brother's a PhD, and my sister is this, and my grandchildren, they're all in college. You're, you're like at their level. And I said, I said, what do you mean? He says, your science understanding is fantastic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I just smiled. And at no point you went, we know this really great guy called Quantum Eraser who's broken it all down for us and made us all seem really intelligent. <laughs> you didn't say yeah, that at any no, stage. No, no, but I did say, but I did go to Flat Earth and gas pressure that container and the, the gate, well, after they say all, after the one guy said that about me, he's not going to backtrack it now. So once I got the accolades, I brought him Flat Earth and it was beautiful. He says, wow, you have a point. <laughs> I, I, I get it, your sentiment was, and I love it, but pff, it was, it was it's, one, it's one it was of those great. things that, while I'm I'm grateful and I'm smiling and it's nice to hear, it is one of those things that ground zero is definitely quantum eraser. You know, a lot of the battles I win, I wouldn't be winning had it not been for quantum erasers input. There's just no two ways about that. So, well, it, yeah, I mean, definitely everything I shared uh, yesterday was from quantum eraser and as well you. Uh, mind work so but you know this guy he went and know nathan oakley 1980 or quantum eraser from uh, whatever you know so i just i'm gonna see both of them again because i see him quite often it's just a good start i'm not trying to take away your thunder either it's my because there's going to be an audience just my opportunity of passing on my kudos and thanks that's all it is i'm not trying to take away the shine from that experience in any way because it's that's cool right you know suddenly oh it's it's great i i i humbly and tell everyone on that conversation came from quantum eraser so there's nothing original with me well that said you know half the things that have been explained to us and i do mean about 50 percent, probably more like 20 are stuff that we learned at school you, know, you just you just you've also been brainwashed so a lot of this stuff resonates because you know it already you know you were genuinely taught it at a high school level most of the stuff we talk about is high school level. It's amazing, really. Yeah, but it's not also, it's it's not just knowing the basics, it's applying it. Like, if you learn what a, a naturally observed phenomenon is, 
you don't apply that to a shoe. <laughs> right? Because that's not what a naturally observed phenomenon would be. But again, <laughs> I guess you. It's about understanding, not just right. knowing. It's not about memorization, even though in all the schools, memorization is so emphasized. It's about actually understanding it. All right, like P. Mars before, just try to throw hypotheses in to try to sound smart. Like, come on. <laughs> you even well, know was, what you're saying. It was wonderful in the sense that the day before, I got to share the back and forth with that one uh, globetard, common sense criticism, I think he was called. And then he called me through chat, texting, uh, nincompoop and brainwashed and an idiot, all these different things he called me. And then the very next day, someone who's not a globetard, religious type, just hears the argument and says, wow, you're smart. And it's like you get two different viewpoints of, and I said the same thing to that other guy as I did to these guys. Hmm. Yeah. Based on the level of indoctrination, I guess. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head, 10th. When you're dealing with the zealots, you get a very different reaction. They're just on to the next thing they want to challenge you on rather than listening to what you're actually saying. Yeah, chronic ignorance. They, they literally don't listen. Yeah. Well, we say the same it. thing over and over again. Ignore it. Yeah. Completely ignore it. Sometimes there's a short pause when there's a devastating point, but they completely ignore the point and reassert their claim that they've made six times already. But my body of science. I think we've killed the body of science, you know, on this show. Yeah. Pseudoscience. The body I, th I think of science uh, really needs to get on the diet and lose some of that weight because it's it's <laughs> just taking up space. It's not really productive. The body of science is a Walmart. Did you hear me? I said yeah. it's the body of pseudo kill. Yeah, science exactly. Right. By, by pointing out that it's actually matter of factly speaking, the body of pseudoscience, as you put it, tenth man. That was the death of the body of science because the body of science that prefix meant pseudoscience. I just didn't think that would be the case, that we'd get to the point where, you know, there was a bit of a convoluted understanding when you got, say, Jeronism saying science has lied to us. He doesn't do it anymore, but a couple of years ago, he was right because he's also meaning pseudoscience has lied to us. But because we didn't have the appreciation we do now, that when they say pseudoscience, well, sorry, when they say science, they're actually just hijacking the empirical method to lend weight to their just-so story, or, more succinctly, pseudoscience. So it's just that understanding that's, that's that has definitely been iterated here, for the most part, I would say. Again, kudos to Quantum Eraser. Yeah, I think the definition of the scientific method is undervalued until used because every time i use it with the common person oh, that makes total sense that's right and then when we use it with someone who's a, a globe tart all of a sudden facts don't matter truth doesn't matter it's got to be their uh, presupposition that matters I wonder where Sleeping Warrior is. I recently did a moon test. He's sleeping it. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Oh, did? Just playing video games. Probably. Did he get a did he get a flare? Yeah, he did, yeah. Nice. Online. Should I see if I can call him? That would be some good stuff coming from sleeping if you got that thing. Give him a ring and we'll see if we can get hold of him. If he answers, I'll tell him we're recording so he knows straight away.
So yeah, you've got a what is it? A thermal camera? Is that the correct title? Yeah, I think it's front uh, forward facing infrared radar or infrared. No, it's thermal. It's not infrared. Yeah, thermal camera. Doesn't look like he's around. I've tried to call him. He may call back. Because we'll find out what his uh, results were. Obviously, we had Ken Wheeler do it. So, <laughs> I don't know. If we all kind of knew that anyway. That's why Mark Sargent flashes his temperature laser thing into the camera every time he does an interview. What do you mean? I don't. I don't know what that. What does Mark do? You watch Mark Sargent do an interview. He'll often pick up what looks oh, yeah, like yeah. a gun and fire it directly at his camera, and it's just the laser pointer off his thermometer from doing moonlight tests. That's that's why he's got one. But it's he's been doing it for a long time because it's something that was covered in two thousand fifteen. It's an interesting. Uh, it it was just pitched as interesting. Now, again, thanks to Quantum Array for getting a lot of kudos today. Specular reflections and the detailing of how... Is it 60-level optics? I don't know what that term really means other than to describe specular reflections. But that essentially debunks any notion that you could have the uniform reflection we see and experience from the moon if it's a reflection of the sun. Well, that's... I'm sorry I had a delayed reaction. I'm sorry I had a delayed reaction. I, I was doing something else. Did Pete, J did somebody say, was that Pete who said it's thermal, not infrared? I said, is it a thermal camera? Is that the correct name for the camera? I said it's IR. No. It's, it's called FLIR, front-facing infrared. Yeah, and then he said, no, it's thermal. I said no, it's thermal. I think that uh, uh, that uh, thermal uh, is infrared. Yeah, but it might, we were talking about the specific yeah. name of the camera. Is the name of the camera called thermal camera or IR it's camera? Thermal as is infrared. <laughs> no, we know. He said it wasn't. Things. Oh, did he? Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. I'm talking about that. Temperature zones, it doesn't show you infrared image as in Th night thermal vision. is infrared. Stop shouting, you fucking idiot. Uh, My he's... word, oh, time for more word. Pete and Pete. Wah, wah, wah. Stop shouting, time for more Pete and Pete. Right, Shut the fuck up. clown. Uh, who's who's rumpusing? Who's doing back? that? Oh, it's the one. <laughs> You're not normally triggered the one. What's going on? Oh, this idiot. John triggers everybody. This is uh, not very productive. No, not really. So anyway. Yeah, John, normal. Oh, it is productive. <laughs> no, I, I think not. it's very productive. <laughs> yeah, well, your definition of productive is uh, not shared, I believe. It's productive. Yeah, my definition of production is producing. So we are producing, we are exposing clowns, right? Yeah. That's productive. We want to answer questions. Well, okay, I'm going to try and get it back on this subject matter. So Yeah, thermal is, no, it's not thermal, it's infrared. <laughs> so with this camera that Anthony's got, <laughs> this thermal camera, he's asked me a question, and I'll give you his question and my answer and just see if you agree. So he was saying... What he's going to do is block the light with a piece of material and test the difference. Fairly straightforward. But he was asking me about what material he should use to block the moonlight. My answer was it doesn't matter if it's reflecting the light away or absorbing some of the light. With the exception of the moon shadow being within millimetres of the material, if it was super, super absorbent, that might tarnish the result but just have it a meter away and it won't make a blind bit of difference what you use to block that moonlight when you measure the shadow. Just block it out. Who cares what it's been, you know, as long as it's not radiating heat, who cares? You're just blocking out the light from the moon. Would you agree with my answer? I would. I think a good way to do it is have two shot glasses filled with water and put a... Last, uh, a regular paper 
over, not really on top of it, but like a few few feet away. And the other one, you use one of those um, the lenses that uh, kind of like magnifying glass that they have on TVs where they, I forget what they're called, fent fentanyl glass or something. And then see if the temperature of the shot glass water changes. You know, you have a glass, so it kind of keeps the temperature without it radiating out. And then you just see which one do you like after half an hour, which one is colder. I don't even see that that's necessary. Just do it on a bit of concrete. Moonlight on concrete. Shadow of moonlight on concrete. Is there a difference? It's really easy. I don't see why you've got to have shot glasses and water and stuff. I mean, maybe you've got a, a justifiable reason, but I just think this is a really simple task. It's just, the reason I brought it up is Anthony explained, Sleeping Warrior explained to me that Sean Hufford had gone out and done this. But then when given the very simple instructions of what was required, he then went out and took this based on buildings and their position relative to the moon's light. And I'm like, well, but, but the buildings are going to be radiating off the heat that they've kept in during the day. So this is kind right. of weird. And the end conclusion, from what I understand, I haven't watched the video, was that it's it's giving off warm light, you know, completely in contradiction to the ma the majority of the uh, demonstrations I've seen. So it's like, okay, well, he's giving a completely contrasting result, but he's doing it with buildings and they radiate heat. So this seems a bit weird that he would do it in that manner when it's such a simple test to do. But there we go. That was just my take on it. I think the first time I ever heard anybody talking about this was Brian Mullen in 2014 or 2015. Before he went missing or quit or whatever. Brian Mullen, yeah. Uh, all, all of this, uh, this information coming in about the moonlight and reading it with infrared uh, goggles and all that, it just kind of backs up my suspicion that it the moonlight may not be uh, sending out literal cold light, but is just having a, an entropy effect, maybe releasing or creating an enhanced heat exchange where it is being absorbed that could result in both more heat and more cold. So maybe that what's, is a clue. What's the underlying? What's the underlying claim though? What's the implicit claim in this? Well, the claim would be that when moonlight hits uh, matter, for some reason, the heat transfer from yeah one piece of matter to another will go more rapidly than not being hit by moonlight. No, no, it's not. The implicit claim is the moon is reflecting the sun's light. What? Oh, oh, yeah, pff, the baller claim. Yeah, sure. That, well, that's. That, that, that's just that's important though the, the, the reason that's important is because you can either make one of two choices Arwin, wander off into speculation that people will hold you to task on when there's no real necessity to do so I appreciate I'm saying this to you and you like to do that but you do disclaim it but the reason the subject is on the table in the first instance is because there's a claim the moon reflects the sun's light well right. based on the temperature and specular reflections you can't have a uniform reflection from that surface you could if it was concave but that's not what they're claiming it is yep uh, yeah <laughs> there's so much wrong with it but for me i'm starting to just get more curious as to what these things really are we know that it's being lied about i just want to know a little more and i think i yeah my idea that it instead of transferring heat or cold it may simply have a, an, an, yeah, a, a, some kind of transmuting effect where it hits locally, causing heat exchange to go more rapidly. That is my idea right now, and I think that I may be onto something. I've already devised ways to test it in setups. Anyway. I think if we can actually demonstrate it without a doubt, because right now it's still kind of in limbo, but I think if... Right. Well, I, without a doubt that it has a cooling effect then i think well I mean, there's there's ways to, to prove and disprove that in a setup i'm not gonna call it an experiment yet but if we can do it if if it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know we've, we're manipulating the independent variable mm -hmm. increasing 
the 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 moonlight that's the independent variable right that's the causing that's what's causing the cooling effect so if we can make it if we can make it more intense by by a lens or whatever if we can prove it and then we need to have the quote unquote body of science see what their reaction actually is because i think right now it's like if you even make that notion you're crazy right. like that it doesn't do that yeah so but in order to get a proper thing. experiment we first have to know what it actually does and in order to falsify whether there is actual energy of some kind creating heat or cold is being added you can have a setup where uh, and i put this on my hangout a month ago or something uh, you take a a room with temperature control and uh, yeah, very uh, important the temperature control and a uh, an open roof with a glass or some kind of transparent top so that moonlight will go through that unevaded and then see in this temperature controlled room where it hits the floor where the temperature of the floor would be the same as the air is very important if there is going to be some temperature difference or not and if there's not going to be a temperature difference then i would conclude that there's no cold or heat being added it instead would affect the heat exchange you understand oh my. yeah it's just there's just much more simple ways of doing this if you're going to say that being cold in the moonlight is an observed phenomena well, you can control whether or not you've got moonlight on you just by blocking it out. So right. You're making things far more complicated. It's the same with the shot glasses. You know, this no, is no, a simple no, no, demonstration no. as it's far as I'm concerned. It just doesn't need overcomplicating. No, it, it, it does because I'm actually trying to establish what it does. Not just whether so, it is cold or hot, even. So the reason why... Is that a cause and effect question is or a what is question? Before, I'm going to have to yeah. run here in a, in, in a few minutes. Is is your question a cause and effect question? How, why, or what is question? Cause and effect question, it looks like. What's, causing What's the, the effect? You know. Well, for no, What's I'm the establishing effect? the effect first, really. That's what I suspected. What's the effect? No, no, no. Isolate the effect. So let me try and round it out. Arwen's saying he's looking for a phenomena. That's what he's saying. Yes. Trying to you're figure looking out for a you're looking for a dependent variable does, whether it introduces some kind of temperature difference or if it is just enhancing heat exchange making that go rapid okay i i heard it for the past 20 minutes what is the dependent variable that's what he's trying to find my shot glass you're trying to find the dependent variable pre preliminary test Figure it out first. It's weird salad. <laughs> Great. Preliminary tests. <laughs> That's just weird salad. Uh, uh, hey, I got to go, guys. Have, have a good one. But the, this is nonsense as to up to this point. Do you want any final words, Nathan, the reason. <clears throat> Hold on. The reason let, why I was going to... Let, let Arwen get the last word in. Right. I'm, I'm just... I'm not claiming science yet. I'm trying to figure out, and then maybe I I can get something together to actually go there. Okie dokie. With that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. A couple more days to Christmas, but uh, hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!